Why are there so many white sharks in Southern California? According to the Shark Lab at California State University, Long Beach, there has been a five-fold increase in shark sightings over the last 10 years. I've been fortunate enough to document many of these. Here is a recent scene I filmed of a couple swimmers swimming unknowingly past a juvenile white shark. The shark, surprised, avoids the swimmers. Many sightings are now common among the surf community. Why are they here? The answer is somewhat straightforward. Southern California is a nursery habitat for white sharks, specifically in the months from April to October. It is not rare for surfers to see breaches and have encounters during these months. I do believe these encounters most definitely have occurred in the past, but now encounters like this are much more common due to technology. In a result, many surfers feel much more comfortable around sharks. It is a balance and respect for their space should always be taken. It is apparent that unprovoked attacks are extremely rare in Southern California. As more and more drones make their way to the beach, we will all see more and more shark encounters. Notice the second drone in this frame. Undoubtedly, much of the media will report these encounters in the wrong light. For this reason, I do not allow any of my footage to be used by sensational media outlets, nor do I give permission to any media to use the footage without first having context on how it will be used. Context is important. Footage like this, where a shark gets close to a surfer is now commonplace, and instead of producing fear-mongering headlines, the messaging used by the media must change. As a photographer, I highly recommend others not to use viral media agencies or to give media free use without a clear understanding of how it will be used first. There's been three shark human encounters that resulted in injury in California this year. Nearly all the coverage of these encounters left out the conditions and the human actions that existed prior to the attack. Notice this scene. The stand-up paddleboarder points at the shark and the surfers, like most surfers, understand the situation. One of them actually comes close to the shark for a better look. The shark is calm and the surfer gets closer for a nice peek at this magnificent animal. He gives it space before retreating. It was a nice scene to film and one that undoubtedly would be sensationalized in many outlets. One of the primary reasons these sharks are so close to shore is because one of their favorite food sources is there. Stingrays. Here is a clear example of a juvenile white shark in shallow water in search of rays. Notice the ray on the ocean floor. As I rotate the drone, you can see the ray flutter away. These white sharks also enjoy the oxygen rich waves near the shore. This clip is a beautiful example of why it is called the white shark. But no matter how many beautiful scenes I've filmed, I've often filmed scenes that remind me of why I choose not to share exact locations of great white shark sightings. I struggle to share this type of footage because I want to keep this channel positive so I'm sharing it as an attempt to spread awareness. On this day, I noticed these jet skiers appearing to chase things. When I first saw this, I knew they were likely chasing sharks. Here, you can see the shark. While the jet skiers don't have a visual on the shark, you can see its outline here. In fact, the jet ski goes right over the shark. And given that this is taking place in an active shark nursery, 
I knew that this behavior was likely interfering with the shark feeding and nursery environment. It is obvious they are searching, so I moved the drone over to draw their attention away from the shark, knowing full well the shark will likely appear behind them. And just as predicted, it does. This shark wants nothing to do with these jet skis, and I don't blame it. It does not surprise me that I found a shark with a dorsal fin cut in half in this exact location just days prior. While I can give the benefit of doubt that these folks don't mean active harm to the sharks, the following clips, taken just minutes later, makes me second guess that assessment. Any person who respects nature will find the next clip absolutely disappointing. This area is an active birding location, used by pelicans, comorants, and various other birds. Notice the dark spots on the water. Those are sardines, and these birds are there to eat. The jet skiers notice the birds, and the following actions are easy to discern. This jet skier purposely drives through the flock. Here, you can actually see him striking a few birds and dispersing the flock of hundreds. It's behavior that any person who respects nature will find hard to watch. And while some folks will undoubtedly see nothing wrong with this, it is perhaps an opportunity to further reflect upon how our actions affect the nature around us. Striking a few birds may seem minor, but it may also be illegal under the Migratory Bird Act in the United States. Regardless, I always see footage that can help me see past the bad behavior. Here's an example. Here's a white shark, a dolphin, and surfers. Watch as the dolphin surfs the waves, near the shark, near the swimmers, all in their own space. That is beauty. There are two certainties for the coast of Southern California. Great white sharks are close and more humans are entering the water. Understanding these creatures, respecting their space, and acknowledging that they actually avoid human interactions much more than they do engage with humans is key to understanding the rare moments when they do engage. Yes, they are here in large numbers and beautiful scenes like this happen every day. These patterns in nature are breathtaking. White sharks are a major part of this great ecosystem. Respecting their nursery areas is vital and imperative. Only those that take it for granted cannot see it that way. The reality is the coast of California is amazing. You don't have to take my word for it. I can merely show you. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. I also encourage you to visit the links I've included to some organizations that are helping to protect our oceans.